Hey, this is Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In this video, we're going to be working on Star-Lord's belt and holsters. This was a really fun build, and I'm looking forward to showing it to you. Okay, so in this video, we are going to be working on Star-Lord's belt. And what you see here is a paper template, and I created this in Illustrator. And it's uh, draw, you know, drew it out and then printed it so it tiled. So then I just taped it together. Now I also fit it to my body, make sure it fit. And the it might look a little small, but I sort of cut that off when I was doing it in Illustrator, so that uh, I didn't have to use another pa piece of paper when I was tiling it. So I'll just add that on later. So in Illustrator, you create things like this with just uh, the pen tool. Uh, I did a rough drawing and then brought that into Illustrator, traced this out, and then printed it. And as you'll see, there's there's uh, some other pieces in here, some other drawings that are in the main template, and those are the other pieces of leather that get put on there or foam that you put on there. So what we'll do is we'll make a template of this whole thing with a, a, a heavier cardstock. Then I'll cut these pieces out and make templates for those with the cardstock. Now, once we have that done, we will put that on our foam. We're actually going to use foam. Now, I saw a video that Zombie did, uh, Grace over at Zombie, uh, her channel. There's links to it. Take a look. It, they are incredible videos. And she used foam, two millimeter foam. She put the template on here. She created it. Now foam, I love working with foam, so this is gonna be fun. Then, after she had that, I thought she might be uh, weathering it, and I was thinking about weathering it, but I was worried that the foam's a little bit too flimsy, even if you use a thicker foam. So I decided uh, to follow her lead, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cover that foam with this uh, you know, pleather, this faux leather to give it more uh, of a uh, oomph. So that's a technical term, oomph. And that's what we're gonna do that. And of course, we'll put all that on with our barge cement, which uh, once you use that stuff, it sticks like crazy. And then of course, we'll need all these little pieces and parts that were 3D printed, the little O-rings that go here and here that hold the, some of the belt together, or at least it looks like it holds the belt together. And then, of course, one of the main things we're going to use is the, uh, one of the neat things here, 3D print lines, is the buckle. Now, this is from the first movie, and I just, I didn't care for it. Uh, a, the print didn't come out all that well. I used way too low of a uh, fill, so you get all these little holes here, looking holes. But then I just didn't like it in general. I like the new one from the new movie. Uh, it's got a neater profile and some nice clean lines. Problem was the file off of Thingiverse, I thought was way too small. So what I did was I scaled it up and I did it at uh, 125%. And then I stopped the print just as it did that first layer so that I could, maybe even the second layer, so I could sort of see it and not waste a lot of filament. And I did it at 150%. And I thought 150% looked way too big. 125 was, I think, just about right. It's looking a little small right now, but I think once I get it all together, we'll see. I might have to might have to scale it up. So I printed one out at a 125%. Again, if I have to go bigger, I will, but I think this is going to do it. Now, I still have to finish all these prints, uh, the prints, but I'm going to wait and start actually working on the foam and the leather and the, and the, the, the actual belt itself, and then I'll... In between, I'll be sanding these things. You don't have to watch that because that's that's not mind-numbingly boring to do, let alone watch. But I'll be sanding these like crazy, doing some fill, this and that, and then we'll come back when it's time to sort of paint and age them. So let's go ahead and start making our patterns. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is trace out our patterns that we printed out onto some heavier cardstock paper. And there I am just zooming along, cutting that stuff out. God, I wish it went that fast. Now we have all the pieces and we're ready to go. Now what we do is we, of course, uh, I have traced everything onto foam and I have remembered to flip the pattern. Now if you don't flip the pattern, you have pieces that are going the same direction and you have to have a mirrored image so make sure you flip your patterns and then of course I'm cutting out the foam now this is just two millimeter foam so I can use scissors for that so once the patterns have been cut out we go ahead and put it on to the faux leather once the standard pattern is cut I'm now tracing around the 
actual shape so that I have uh, something to fold over. Now we go ahead and cut everything out. So again, here we have the actual shape is the inner one, and we've got the uh, outer one that I sort of drew freehand is for the fold over, so I can just fold things over and uh, glue that up that way so that everything matches up. Now we add some of our glue, pretty standard here, both sides. And remember, when you're uh, doing this, put the pattern the way it's going to be on the leather and then flip it over so you don't put glue on the wrong side. Uh, the leather curls up a little bit, so you just have to sort of monkey with that until you can get everything to lay flat. And uh, I try to make sure I got it as, you know, as near to the actual lines that I traced out. Even though I had that overlap, I wanted to make sure I didn't, um, I didn't go too far past it. Then making sure to press down firmly so there's no bubbles or anything. Now I'm going to go ahead and f I glued down actually some of the uh, leather in the back and of course the uh, foam and now I'm cutting little nicks here uh, little cuts into the foam or into the uh, leather so that uh, when I fold it over I'm not getting a lot of bubbling or rippling and I can sort of fold it really easily uh, I don't cut all the way to the uh, end because then you know the, the line would show up the cut line would show up I'm sort of about you know uh, an eighth of an inch uh, away from the leather and again now we go ahead and we add some some glue to all of our back pieces because things have got to stick. And now we go ahead and fold things over. And you can see this is where the cuts come in handy. Uh, I must have forgotten to make a cut there. So I make that cut and now you can see that that edge just folds over really nicely and you get a nice, uh, nice fold line. And then we go ahead and speed it up and fold away. And while I was doing that, I went ahead and uh, started to finish up uh, the buckle. Okay, now through the miracle of modern editing, I've gone ahead and glued up and wrapped up all the pieces. And I'm just sort of lining them up to where I think they're going to fit nicely. And we go on the other side. And yeah, that's looking, uh, that's looking about right. I'm looking at some photo references to make sure I get the... Uh, the angled piece is pointing the same way and the right way because uh, that center one I almost put uh, upside down so the the points are going up and then I go ahead and I put on the Thingiverse file and you can see it definitely to me is too small this is the straight 100% print from Thingiverse so we don't want to use that and we're going to use the 125% print that I did which is drying I've actually put a bunch of um, putty on that and it's drying up but that's what we're going to go with the 125 Okay, and here we have it with the finished uh, sort of buckle and the little the little uh, angle irons. You can see that was way too small. Now, uh, I noticed the stuff, you know, it isn't leather, it's plastic, and it's very shiny. And, of course, we're going to be weathering this, but I thought, why not scuff it up a bit to make sure that the, the weathering paint that I'm going to use, which is just, you know, black and brown acrylic sticks, plus add some wear lines. So I'm just using a foam sponge uh, sandpaper to uh, score it up a little bit and get it ready for paint. Okay, here's where I made a little mistake. I put foam all the way to the end of the straps. And of course, they have to wrap around that eyelet. And uh, it'd be a little too thick the way I did it because I didn't take the foam out. So I just sort of went ahead and peeled it back, which is a little difficult when you've got so much glue on it. And I ripped out some of the foam. So when you do this, make sure you don't go all the way with your foam. I then went ahead and add some glue to all the sides that we're going to get folded over and I uh, got it all ready. I put some glue on the eyelet and went ahead and uh, put them all together. And this way everything would stick really well. And there we go, I'm putting some pressure and there were some gaps so I went ahead and used some other fabric glue, sort of squeezed it in there to make sure it would hold everything together because uh, even though it's not going to be taking a lot of um, strain, I figured, you know, the more glue the better. I adhere to my father's glue rules. Just keep pumping the glue in. And uh, this is holding very well. I then glued the other piece on and to make sure everything stuck really well I went ahead and just used some, some uh, clamps to hold them together overnight. 
Okay, now we're going to go ahead and lay down the actual pieces to the belt. And, you know, you do have some, you know, tries for this. Uh, the glue doesn't set automatically, but you can might be able to see some pencil lines I did draw onto the leather so that I knew pretty much where I wanted them to go, or onto the main belt. And we're just adding glue to make sure that everything sticks nice and tight. And there we go. We're going to go ahead and push that stuff down so it fits just nice. And, uh, you know, I think it worked out really well. It's the, the, the little O-rings just where I want it to be. And I'm just giving it a whole bunch of pressure to make sure it stays. And there we go. It's time for some coffee. I end up doing these things sometimes at 5 a.m. So uh, I need some coffee. Now, I went ahead and did both, uh, glued down both sides. And I noticed that the center is a little flimsy how I built this. So I'm just going to add a support to that. And here we have the buckle. Uh, it has been uh, filled and sanded and then uh, spray painted. I used uh, the, this uh, Rust-Oleum uh, hammered, uh, I think it was called hammered steel, and it gives it the nice pock marks. And now I'm just going to go ahead and age it. And for that, you know, I'm using this really nice stiff brush I like and uh, some black paint and some brown paint. And you're just sort of working it into the crevices because that's where dirt, you know, and grime uh, end up adhering. Now the cool thing about using this uh, paint is uh, this pockmark paint is that it does leave you know three little three-dimensional like pock holes it looks like in it and the black really gets in there and it looks really nice and again you're just going through and spreading this on all through the piece. Once you get it about where you want it, you just go ahead and get a paper towel or a sponge or a, a rag, whatever you want, and you're sort of dabbing the stuff off, wiping it off. You don't want to go too much. If you take too much away, then you clean it, right? And you want it to look dirty. So this is, you know, trial and error. You just sort of have fun with it and dab some paint on, dab some paint off, and take your time with it. Have fun. Uh, don't go overboard. Sometimes you can just keep adding and adding, and then uh, it gets a little too muddy. But, you know, I'm just sort of dabbing some stuff away, and uh, wiping it here and there, and then I'll probably just go back and add a little bit more if needed. Okay, I am happy with that, and now I'm just going to go ahead and add a few highlights. I just have some silver model paint, uh, you know, in those little glass jars, and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight here and there, like maybe a piece of it wore through and it's cleaned, uh, and just sort of marking it away with my finger and I'm going to add that to some of the areas just to sort of you know we've got some um, mid-tones we've got now these dark grimy uh, blacks and grays and now we're going to have just a little bit of highlight here and there Okay, and now it is time to put the buckle on. I went ahead and scored the back of the buckle up a little bit with a Dremel because uh, it was really smooth to have something for the paint to hold on to and then we're just going to go ahead and of course I glued the other side of the belt up. We go ahead and let that dry and once, once both sides are dry we can go ahead and s just slap that buckle down there and uh, place it and just give it some pressure to make sure that it stays on nice and tight. And I actually did uh, go ahead and when uh, I was you know sure it was in the right place that I wanted I did go ahead and clamp it overnight just to make sure it just held on there and the glue was there and uh, I think it came out really well. I'm really happy with that buckle. Uh, I probably should have painted the back of it but I figure it's going to be right up against me. Who's going to see that? Okay now one of the more easier parts. I just put some glue on the back of the belt and some uh, industrial velcro and velcro the back of the belt and again I used a clamp because I think this is you know this is going to be the most tension of any of it, uh, the Velcro, and I just wanted to make sure it was going to stay on there and had a really good, really good hold. Now it is, again, the fun part. I love doing this. We're browning it up. We're, uh, we're aging this. Uh, the scuffing was really necessary. There was a few places I didn't scuff up, and the paint just slid right off. So if you're going to use this type of pleather, this type of plasticky stuff, make sure you scuff it up. And here I am. I'm just using uh, the same brush that I used before, uh, st pretty much straight black. Uh, with a little bit of water and then different burnt umbers and yellows and I leave it there for a little bit not too long you don't want it to dry it's still wet and then I go ahead and take a um, I think I'm going to about use a uh, just a cloth and we're going to dab the the paint off of it and again you don't want to overdo it you don't want to take off everything you've just put on there but you know that's obviously looks like there's a whole bunch of paint on it so you dab away you smudge it around uh, you look at it 
you work relatively quick, you try not to make patterns to things, and you just keep uh, sort of pushing and pulling it around until you get to where you're happy. And this is I'm one of my favorite parts, is, is doing this weathering. It's funny because we try to work so hard to make it like look really well, and then we, then we sort of goo it up with paint and everything. And, you know, I'm rubbing some here, I'm putting some there, and uh, we'll probably go back and give this a couple more coats here and there, but I'm really happy with how this, uh, this fake leather, this marine vinyl, is looking, because it it's looking just like leather at this point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the stitching, and this is something I saw again on Zombie's channel, such a fantastic idea. This is uh, a puffy paint, and I'm just going to go ahead and use this to make the stitches, because uh, it's raised and it looks, it looks like stitching. It's fantastic. And I'll put, of course, the links in the show notes to all the colors of everything that I use, what type of vinyl it is, and uh, what type of puppy paint it is. I had initially bought one that was way too brown, and I like this because it was lighter and uh, a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a contrast. You might be wondering, why didn't you put it down first and then weather it with everything else? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to put it down. So now I'm going to be adding the stitching like right here, and I'm going to have to go back and re-weather that, which is fine because I can weather a little bit more to the print in general. And you can see how that just looks like stitching. Uh, I'm trying to keep it even. I'm trying to keep it the same width and the same height uh, and length, but, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it'll, uh, it will do, especially when we end up scuffing it up and adding a little bit more uh, grime to it so it's not so shiny. Okay, now the last thing we need to do are the holsters. And yes, uh, sometimes you see these are built right onto the pants. I'm going to put them onto the belt. And then when I'm wearing the pants, I'll just use like Velcro or something to make sure it lays flat. So I found a good reference online and I drew this out in Illustrator. Uh, I just use Illustrator when I'm tracing patterns like this. If you're interested in seeing like a, a demo on how I do that, uh, make a comment and I'll just go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and cut the foam out, cut out all the little circles and all the little shapes quite quite tedious because remember you got to remember to flip these so I've got uh, one of each uh, in a mirrored orientation and we just cut them out to go ahead and use them for the build once everything is cut out we of course you know transfer the patterns over to the foam we mirror them again and then we go ahead and place all the little foam parts onto the holsters. And now remember, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to put the leather over this, or the pleather over this, so these are raised areas. And I started at the bottom, because I figured I could always monkey around a little bit with the placement on top, but uh, if I used weight, if I used too much space up top and I ran out at the bottom, I was out of luck. So I went from the bottom to the top. Once that done, we went ahead and added glue to the back of everything. This stuff sucks up the glue, and I used quite a bit of glue for this job. But of course, you're going to put glue to one side, and you're going to put glue to the other side of the foam and put it up. Now again, wear your respirator. Uh, I didn't have mine on at one point, and I realized I was getting a little lightheaded because <laughs> you're using a lot of glue for this build. Okay, now once the glue has dried uh, and it's just tacky, uh, we're going to go ahead and put these things on. And uh, I said, well, which way should I do it? I think I'll just flip that over onto it and tack like one corner of it so I know it's going to stay in place. Again, I've got plenty of uh, material on the sides so that I can go ahead and fold it over. And now this was fun because remember we added those pieces now we really go ahead and push them in the spaces around it to add this raised look really psyched i first saw that one i was like oh this is going to work really really well and there we go we just go ahead and work in again this stuff is really strong it's like marine you know vinyl uh, work your fingernails in there uh, i didn't bother with a pen because you can just get in there with your finger and really really uh, you know, gouge that in there so that that glue sticks really well. Yeah, this was a really fun part seeing this come to life, this piece. And I actually did go ahead and use a Sharpie to get in there. <laughs> so there's the first piece. Now it's time to fold everything over. So I went ahead and glued both together. We got these really nice shapes. Uh, they look fantastic. I was so pleased. And now it's time to add glue to the backside and start to do the fold over. So I did one. 
and it turned out really well. I was really pleased with it uh, later on. And now, again, I make these cuts into the uh, marine vinyl so that when these things fold over, uh, they're not all bunched up. And there we go. I have now weathered these, and I have glued them on to the belt. And you can see that I, uh, you know, I weathered up everything uh, to match. I'm probably going to give everything one more coat now that it's all together. Uh, but really, uh, really, really pleased. Everything turned out really well. And I cannot wait to try this thing on. Hey, everybody. Well, the belt is finished. We uh, went ahead and I put the... Uh, holsters on and uh, the velcro is fitting really well I might tighten it up a bit and I am super pleased with it so of course I had to put my Star Lord shirt on if I'm gonna show off the belt might as well put the shirt on and uh, so let's see what it ended up looking like okay so there we go we've got the belt the buckle it looks really nice nice and worn stitching looks real which is <laughs> awesome the holsters came out really well. Again, when I finish the pants, uh, start and finish the pants, I should say, I'll put some Velcro here probably to hold it in. I'm also gonna have to rivet the uh, actual holster uh, plastic uh, 3D print that we'll be making to put here. But yeah, the stitching came out really nice. The uh, little loops look great. The back fits really well. It's just a piece of Velcro. Back there, we'll probably go ahead and Add a little bit more, I need to make it a little bit tighter. But yeah, belt turned out super, really happy with it. Next, I'm not sure what the next build's gonna be. Um, I'm really debating that. Do I want to do, oh, let's take a look at this. Oh, that'll look great. Boom. It's gotta come up with a, uh, get a little clip or something for that. So I'm torn about the next build. Um, now that I've got the holsters, I'm really thinking maybe the guns, so we can finish the holster off totally, put the clamp on, or you, like the little plastic thing on that holds it, and then the blasters. I think that's what we're gonna do next. I am also, uh, as I'm working on the blasters, I'll be working on this. So we'll do some videos where we uh, intercut, we do some videos where we're doing this, because I've got a lot of sanding to do, uh, a lot of fill. For some reason, some of the pieces are a little loose here. So a little bit of filling, a little bit of uh, uh, maybe some Bondo and some sanding to get everything looking nice and shiny, a lot of sanding. So I think what we'll end up doing is let's go ahead and start the blasters while we're working on the helmet. That was my ring, smacking the desk here. And then we can really finish these things off. So super pleased. I hope you like this video. This was a lot of fun. Uh, when you're working on a lot of the little props and a lot of little things like this, it's neat and it's it's really interesting, but it doesn't feel like you're, you know, you've got the whole cosplay outfit going. So actually finishing uh, a piece of the costume itself, the belt, was really satisfying. So I've got a bunch of little things I'm working on in the background and uh, some surprises there, some of the, the different builds we're working on, more videos that'll be coming out. Again, if you are interested in anything that I used for this build, the, the uh, puff tape, uh, where I've got the files, just go ahead and look in the show notes below. You can click on those and pick up anything. Uh, the Amazon ones are affiliate links, and if you click on those and buy something, uh, that gives the channel a little bit of money, which we will then spend in Amazon uh, to buy more stuff for <laughs> videos. So again, uh, go hit the show notes, see uh, all the little pieces, parts that I got, uh, including over at Thingiverse. And of course, uh, subscribe so you get these videos regularly. Uh, we've got a lot more in the queue all ready to go. And of course, like, and that'd be great. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot again. I'm Kevin from 3D Printed Props. Take it easy and see you in the next video.